up until now, you've been asking the wrong question. You've been asking people what they think of your photographs. Is it good or is it bad? The question you really should be asking is, who are you photographing for? How's it, how's it? In professional circles, there is a phrase that says either you shoot for the sale or you shoot for the soul. Now, most people, both in a professional and an amateur sense, tend to end up shooting for the sale. They're looking to please other people. Now, obviously, as a professional, you have briefs and guidelines that you need to follow. But as an amateur, or as a hobbyist, or somebody who just does it for the love of it, are you photographing to make other people like you? Or are you doing this because you want to just simply enjoy taking photos? I'm going to hazard a guess that it is the latter and that you just want to enjoy taking photographs. And if other people like them, then that's a bonus. Stop caring what people think. The easiest way to stop worrying, of course, about what people think of your images is simply to, well, to stop asking them. That doesn't mean not posting on social media or wherever you choose to display your images. It simply means not being those people, and we've all seen them from time to time, who go, which is better for my photograph? Color or black and white? I can't decide, help me choose. That right there is the worst thing that you can do for your creativity. You are asking a, an aggregate of people's opinions about what you should do with your image in an effort to please everybody else. This just leads to photographs after photograph that all look similar, so samey. You need to stand out from the crowd. You need to stick your head above the parapet and start to speak with your own voice. Social media is not a place to get your ability as a photographer validated. And we'll get onto that in a second. It is simply a place for you to share images. As you do share images that go a little bit beyond what is considered to be, say, the norm, wherever you choose to show your photographs, you may run into people who give you unsolicited, um, let's call it feedback loosely, and say your photograph is uh, rubbish, or that it's got umpty tumpty million things wrong with it. And when you run into this, I want you to take this quote to heart. Be yourself. I much prefer seeing something, even if it is clumsy, that doesn't look like somebody else's work. That's William Klein there. As people learn photography, we get taught that there are rules that we should follow and obey, like these are some sort of sacrosanct things that must never be, you know, confronted. And some of these rules are legitimate. If you change an f-stop, it will change your exposure. That is a hard and fast rule. Saying things like your horizons must always be straight and level is a suggestion rather than a rule. I ran into this a lot, you know, that I would do lots of Dutch tilt and I still do. So that's when the, the horizontals are wonky things. Now, some people hate it and some people like it. I like it. But if I were to go with the common idea that horizons should always be level, then I would be creating photographs that weren't necessarily mine. And this is what you need to be mindful of is that there, there may be suggestions that are being put in place that are holding you back from creating photographs that feel comfortable for you, that feels natural. And this is what we want to get, is you photographing in a way that feels comfortable and natural for your own voice. Now that may run contrary to some of these ideas. You may get pushback from judges and people at camera clubs and stuff like that. And this is when you need to recycle back to this idea of who are you photographing for? Are you photographing for the sale or for the soul? In many respects, it's good when people are questioning your choices about how you are moving forward, because at least you are doing something out of the ordinary, that you are challenging some expectations, some, you know, pushing some boundaries within your photographs. So don't look at it as a negative criticism. Look at it as a positive thing that you are heading in the right direction. Recently, I watched a TED talk given by Ethan Hawke, 
where he talks about the beat poet Allen Ginsberg and when he went off to do a national TV spot and sang a song about Harry Krishna. You know, and he got back to New York to all his intelligentsia friends and they all told him, does she know that everybody thinks you're an idiot? I mean, the whole country is making fun of you. And uh, he said, that's my job. You know, I'm a poet. And so I find that very liberating because I think that most of us really want to offer the world something of quality, something that the world will consider good or important. And that's really the enemy because it's not up to us whether what we do is any good. And if history has taught us anything, the world is an extremely unreliable critic. I love that idea. It was so liberating when I heard it because, you know, it's here. It's like all of a sudden, yeah, actually, it doesn't matter if I think my work is good enough, so long as I'm putting in the effort that I think it deserves, because it's not for me to judge. It seems counterintuitive, but wow, I was like, I'm now free. I'm free of worrying about what other people think. I don't have to ask people, do you like it? Because I'm just making work for myself. That's my job as a photographer, is to make images that please me first and foremost. No longer did I have to worry about, you know, following the latest fad or fashions or, you know, processing techniques or, you know, the, the, the subject of the, of the century or, you know, the, you know, all these kind of things that cycle around and everybody jumps on the bandwagon looking for, for likes and, you know, shares and followers. I was free to just make my own images and that all of a sudden actually paid benefits because I was speaking visually with my own voice again. This is what you're going to start doing. You're going to start creating images that have your soul inside them. And your soul, your unique vision is so much more important than trying to make a technically perfect copy of something that once upon a time was original. So how do you find what motivates you? What, what drives you visually? Uh, there's a misconception, I think, that you know, a lot of famous artists and people who are visual visionaries are born with it. That it just springs like, you know, like divine intervention. And, and then that's not true at all. It comes from hoarding like a magpie all the bits of visual stimuli that speak to you personally. This is why it's kind of, it's silly to sort of say, who should I look at to be inspired? On the channel here, I can give you suggestions about places to explore, but your inspiration is going to be different from mine. So think about the things that inspire you visually. Films, TV. I love the work of Wes Anderson, that symmetrical feel that his, image, his, his films often have. But my photographs are not symmetrical, but they have an orderliness that comes from that symmetrical feeling that Wes Anderson in injects into his films. Asking other people if they like your photograph is putting the ball into their court, that you are saying, tell me what influences you and then I will make something to fit that. You're going about it the wrong way. You need to have it in your own voice. Make a collection of things that inspire you. See how wide ranging those inspirations can, can actually be. See if you can incorporate the feel and the mood of those things into your photography. And when you start doing this, you have a far richer pool of inspiration to draw from than those people who are just simply asking everybody else what they should do with their photos. There is a quote by the very famous marketer, Seth Godin, that goes, people like us do things like this. And in short, that means that we want to be part of a crowd. We want to feel like we are accepted. And this is why so many photographers, I feel, create just bland, homogenous work because they want to feel accepted. They want to feel part of this crowd. They want to feel part of the cool club. And that leads to conforming, to making images that are like everybody else's. 
Instead, take the other quote from Seth Godin to heart, is that I didn't make this for you. Now, what he means there is not saying I didn't make this so you can't have it. It's saying rather that if somebody says, I don't like this, you say, it's okay. It's not for you. It's for me. And that is such an important lesson to take to heart that, you know, a photographer like Ralph Eugene Meatyard, I find his work challenging, interesting, and slightly disturbing, but that's fine because I kind of connect with it. If you don't like it, and I'm sure some of you watching this absolutely will not, Ralph would probably just go, okay, I didn't make it for you. That's part and parcel of, of creating something. You must be willing and brave to, to get to grips with this idea that you can't make something for, to please everybody. Make Images to please yourself first and foremost. Be brave enough to stand up and say, I didn't make this for you. Now, this is not to say that you need to create disturbingly weird <laughs> photographs, right? Okay, It just means create images, like we said earlier, that are natural to you, that they, they feel like they're something that you want to do. They don't have to be crazy, they just have to be yours. Having this confidence, having this unique expression is an ongoing process. It is going to be part of your journey as a photographer from now until you finally put down a camera once and for all. Embrace this progression. When I look at my own photographs, when I was younger they were all over the place, stylistic, because I was finding things, I was finding ideas and what have you. And then I fell into this idea of, oh, I need to start pleasing people. And, and I lost some of that vitality in those early images because I was trying to please other people. Then I discovered that, you know, I don't need to please other people. I can just photograph for myself. And that made everything about it far more enjoyable. Your style of photography, the way that you express yourself is going to change over time and that is perfectly normal. Embrace it. It is time for you to push the boundaries, to come like the, the butterfly from the chrysalis of trying to please everybody else with your photographs, to be brave, to, to create clumsy images that William Klein would love. You will be tempted to invest in new gear and all that sort of stuff over the years in your photography. And the thing that you should invest in, first and foremost, is education. To feed your mind, to, to seek out visual inspiration and, and hoard it so that you can have a richer and far more eloquent way of expressing the way that you see the world. To see more of William Klein's fantastic photography, check out this video here. I know you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching.